Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you from Lake Tahoe Winter Wonderland this year. It has been a blizzard every single day since we've been here and it's still snowing. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I just want to talk to you tonight about what to do when company's coming. You know, we had a warrior on the channel talking about this and saying, could you please do a video talking about what to do because I get all these thoughts coming up like I wish they weren't coming, what if I get really ill when they leave? And this is a really important uh, muscle to develop in recovery, your ability to socialize. You know, community is so important. So, it, you know, with CFS, it's so easy to get isolated, and I did. And I know if I could do it over again, I would make more of an effort during some of those early days to connect with people. But I did begin to connect, and we'll talk about that um, in a few minutes. But I first want to just share with you some strategies that helped me in developing connection uh, and having visits. So basically, the first thing that I would ask, if this person who's coming and you're getting really anxious about it, first you just need to look at that relationship and say, is this a safe person for me right now? Have you been able to explain what's going on for you? Do they respect that? Or is this person an energy drain? Now the thing about it, when you are not feeling well and you are sick or you might be debilitated with CFS, anybody drains you. It's, you know, the most healthy relationship is gonna be challenging. So it's really important while you're recovering to give yourself permission to detach from any unhealthy, toxic relationship in your life. You may just want to end up keeping it that way once you're better, but for now, it is very important to go ahead and, uh, and limit exposure to people that are like energy vampires or suck your energy and are not bringing to the table something for you as well because you're the one that's really in need of support right now. So uh, that's the first thing that I would look at is, is this a positive, supportive relationship that's going to support me in recovery. The second strategy that I used was connecting this with honoring my capacity and honoring my baseline. So the way that this played out is, you know, at all different era, you know, stages in recovery, I could socialize at different amounts of time. So what's your current capacity? Can you have a conversation for five minutes, for 15, 30 minutes, an hour? Whatever you feel that you're comfortable with, and a lot of this might be a little bit of trial and error, you need to let that other person know that this is the time that you can manage, and then just use your phone to set a little timer so that when that time's up, you can, and I always give like a 10 minute cushion so that you can actually close it out when it's needed. But that way you can say, okay, I really need to rest now or whatever it is. And that way um, you can have a blissful goodbye. I like to say it, have a blissful goodbye, leave them wanting more, right? And so you wanna be able to wrap it up in order to honor your capacity. Now you can also, this is also related to baseline because you wanna fit it into your day in a way that will be supportive. So I would usually do any visiting after lunch and before I did my exercise and afternoon rest. So that's, you know, according to whatever your routine is, put it into your most active alert time and that's gonna serve you well. The other thing is work it into your weekly baseline. So I know early in the day, if I had a, you know, a visit with a friend, that meant I wouldn't have anything the rest of the week. Or, you know, and then as I got better and better, I could space them out. Or like if I had a doctor's appointment or some other kind of appointment, it would be on a weekly baseline so I could monitor, you know, okay, I'm meeting with so-and-so on this day, so this day's a chill day to get other things done. It's an icicle that fell. Anyway, getting attacked by the winter wonderland. <laughs> okay, so back to where we were. Calendar, so use your calendar to support yourself when you're having visitors. The third strategy that I used all the time was neural retraining, because as this warrior said, all these thoughts started coming up and it was creating a lot of anxiety about the visit. So it's really important to do stops on that. If you, don't, if you haven't done a neural retraining program, check out my video and slap it down. It's not a replacement for those programs, but it'll give you a little technique to use for now. 
and you can slap down those those scary thoughts about the visit and what I like to do was do a visualization that this person I'm meeting with is such a gift and I pictured a gift with a little bow on top that I was going to unwrap and when I met with this person you know I was going to enjoy the gift of that person that they are in my life and the gems that are inside that gift so it totally shifted my mentality about the visit and got it off of the fearful thoughts about how's this going to affect me and what's going to happen those need to get slapped down because remember you've worked this into your baseline and you're honoring your capacity it's also good for the day that they're coming to have some kind of little activity that you're doing that doesn't require that you can be interrupted in so you don't have to worry so much about are they a few minutes late because this can strive the stress response up and so you just want to be relaxed whether it's you know watching a funny show or you know doing a little art or something like that that's just you know just something to keep you occupied pleasantly for the day that they're coming. And I just said, you know what? If this person is in my inner circle enough to come and visit me now, they will take me as I am and I don't have to clean up for them and I can just let my house and let me be. So that's really important for an authentic relationship. So those are some of the strategies that I employed for someone coming to visit. Um, as I got better, I could go meet them somewhere and that was easier because then I could just determine the time and when I needed to leave. Uh, the other thing I want to address is long time visits. So like if you have people coming for a visit and the thing about that is a conversation needs to be had with the people coming. And I know what I would do is just text them like they were usually family members. So I would just let them know and I would just say, you know what, you know, I'm working in recovery and it just don't take any time that I need to go for a rest or kind of check out that I don't love you because I want to spend as much time as possible and I want that to be good time. So that makes the time spent with them more cream because you know that you're going to get the rest that you need. So I found making the visit fit around my recovery rather than my recovery trying to fit into the visit was a much better way to go. And it was a real shift in my attitude and it really helped support those longer visits. So those are just a few strategies that I use to keep those connections going during recovery. And you know, I just wanna say that community is so important and I did get isolated early in the journey and that is such a difficult, hard place to be. And it's not a good place to be. So this muscle of socializing in recovery is very much worth developing. And one thing that's really easy too is doing an online community. There are so many springing up now that are positive, that are solution focused, like our forum, CFS Warriors. And there's also Community of Hope and Elite Health and Wellness Warriors. So there's a beautiful community of like-minded people out there that it's awesome to be connected to. So that's a great place to start. And then, cause you can get to it when you can as you start to develop these real time, you know, connections and relationships. So anyway, Warriors, hope that's helpful. Remember, life isn't over, it's starting again. And I speak life, health, and wholeness over you. And you know, before I go, I just wanna show you, this is the biggest icicle I've ever seen. Isn't that amazing? I just love it. Give you a little peek down, lots of people playing and having fun after a day on the slopes. Gonna get on there tomorrow now that the blizzard has stopped. So take care, Warriors.